I'm Cynthia McFadden. We begin tonight with the war on crime and a new weapon already transforming investigative work. It's called familial DNA, and it allows investigators to trace suspects through the genetic fingerprints of family members. Police in California credit the technology for the arrest last week of a serial killer suspect in a case dating back a quarter century. For now, just two states permit the use of this science, but as David Wright reports, that soon may change. He's accused of the most brutal crimes, of molesting and murdering at least 10 victims over a 25-year period. But Lonnie David Franklin Jr. is now behind bars because authorities say DNA evidence ties him to the crime scenes. And for the first time ever in this country, the DNA sample that first led police to his doorstep wasn't his. It was his son's. Familial DNA, it's called. Yeah. It's called familial DNA because it is the DNA not of the ultimate suspect, but of a very, very close relative. California and Colorado are the only states that allow familial DNA searches. But the Grim Sleeper case is bound to change that. This is a landmark case. Lonnie David Franklin Jr. is now the poster suspect for the expansion of genetic crime fighting. This will change the way policing is done in the United States. Mr. Simpson, would you uh, show your hands to the jury, please? The LAPD has come a long way since the People versus O.J. Simpson 16 years ago. Back then, the botched handling of DNA evidence helped defense lawyers raise doubts about the blood tying Simpson to the murder scene. Simpson, of course, was acquitted. But the LAPD's DNA lab is now state of the art. If my DNA ended up on that table, could I end up being a suspect? In theory, that's possible. Today, the LAPD gave us a tour of the facility where they made the crucial breakthrough in the Grim Sleeper case. Remember, the familial DNA search had led them to suspect Lonnie David Franklin, but they had no DNA sample of Franklin on file until last Monday when a police stakeout finally paid off. The detectives actually hand carry the items in here. And what was it? A slice of pizza, I think a fork, there was a napkin. Uh, it was a total of, of, I think, eight different items that they submitted to us. And that was enough? It turned out to be enough, yes. As any fan of the TV show CSI can tell you, the technology is morally neutral. Gentlemen, that drop of blood was fresh when it hit the shirt. But the potential applications raise enormous ethical issues. The fact that California authorities caught the grim sleeper is great, unequivocally. But you can imagine lots of misuses of familial DNA. At one extreme, there's the world imagined in the movie Gattaca. In the not-too-distant future, our DNA will determine everything about us. Where the genetic database determines everything from where you can work to who you can marry. That's science fiction. But as of the Grim Sleeper, it's now science fact that a DNA sample collected from one person can implicate members of an entire family. There are certain families that are going to be looked at much more closely by the police than others. This raises specters that used to be associated with the eugenics movement, the science of better breeding. It's almost the idea of corruption of blood. There's also the fear that DNA databases could be the ultimate in racial profiling. African Americans are represented in DNA databases at a rate of about four to one to whites. That means that the families of African American people in the database are going to be disproportionately placed under permanent genetic surveillance. And I imagine there are lots of African-American families who will think that that's racial discrimination, pure and simple. It's not a racial injustice when you catch somebody uh, who just killed 10 people. The people who are most happy about it are the families of the victims, which are all African-Americans. Proponents of the expanded use of DNA point out it's not only helped implicate the guilty, it has also helped exonerate the innocent. We are here today, Your Honor, because we are convinced that he is not guilty. Thank you. Among them, Eddie Joe Lloyd, who served 17 years in a Michigan prison for a murder he didn't commit. But what about Lily Haskell of Oakland, arrested last year while attending a Bay Area protest of the Iraq War and forced to give a sample of her DNA? The very law that expanded California's DNA database, leading to the Grim Sleeper's arrest, requires that anyone arrested for a felony give a DNA sample whether or not they're ever charged or convicted. In Haskell's case, the charges were dropped, but that DNA sample is still in the database. Who knows what they're going to do with my DNA? 
Haskell and others, backed by the American Civil Liberties Union, are now suing the state of California, hoping the expanded database will be declared unconstitutional. California Attorney General Jerry Brown will be defending the new law. There is in our society a presumption of innocence. Does this in any way infringe on that? No more than taking our fingerprints. I mean, you're arrested. The first thing when you're booked is you put your hand down and they get your fingerprints. That's a fact. DNA reveals much more about me than my fingerprint. It may reveal my predisposition to diseases, my genetic history, and it's not at all clear that the full DNA fingerprint may not be stored in ways that will come back to haunt us. What would be wrong with tossing that sample when the case is tossed out? Why not uh, give back fingerprints? Take them out of the FBI file once you're not arrested. We don't do that. Do you understand why a lot of liberals are upset with you for taking this position? I don't know that they are. The DNA approach of California is reasonable. The people voted for it, and I'm hoping the courts will uphold it. But right now, the strongest argument Jerry Brown can make in court is that without this technology, a suspected serial killer would still be out there preying on innocent lives. I'm David Wright for Nightline in Los Angeles.